to another vlog. Today we started our day in South Queensferry at Manor House Bakery. It's a cozy spot known for its delicious pastries and welcoming atmosphere. And I have no idea what to do. After enjoying some freshly baked treats, we strolled through the town's charming streets breathing in the fresh sea air and admiring the colourful houses and the views of the iconic Forth Road Bridge. Later, we headed to Dynamic Earth in Edinburgh it's an interactive museum that takes you on a journey through Earth's history from the Big Bang to the Ice Age. It's an immersive experience so it brings the story of our planet to life making it a must visit for anyone interested in natural wonders. <laughs> In a rotating disc that surrounds the newborn sun, material is starting to clump together to form blocks of rock and ice. Close into the young sun, rocky materials are plentiful. Here, the planets Mercury, Venus, Mars, and your own Earth are forming. The North American plate, the submarine ridge has risen above water and is forming the volcanic island of Iceland. spectrum because it's a bit visible to us goes all the way from red to violet but have you ever wondered if there's anything beyond violet well there is we've got ultraviolet you might have heard of that before uv light many birds and insects can see ultraviolet light and a lot of insects like these butterflies and bees as well they actually use uv light to find flowers more easily you notice the flowers almost glow neon uh, under the uv light here helps them find the nectar and pollen and then what about over at red? What have we got beyond red here? Well, it's something I mentioned earlier. It's the type of light that the James Webb Space Telescope looks for. And that, of course, is infrared light. And that is simply the light given off by heat. So if I turned an uh, infrared camera towards all of you, you'd be glowing very brightly, like this fox here. So that is the heat, uh, light given off by its uh, body heat. A lot of reptiles are able to see infrared, like snakes. Uh, they use this to find their prey, which are often small, warm-blooded mammals. So infrared light's very handy because it actually travels a lot further than light on the visible spectrum, which allows the James Webb Space Telescope to see some of the oldest light in the universe. It's already spotted some of the first ever galaxies to form in our universe. Now we're going to change up uh, our view a little bit now. We're going to take a look at the night sky. And again, we're going to look at the same view with different types of light. But uh, I'm afraid this is not all the kinds of light. Yeah, there's more than this. I'm going to bring in the entirety of the electromagnetic spectrum next. We're going to have a look at the night sky using every single different kind of light, all the way from radio waves up to gamma waves. Now, if you're an astronomer studying things in space, you'll usually have something specific you want to look for. And those specific objects, you might be able to see them easier using different kinds of light. For example, if you're looking for supernovas, exploding stars, you might want to look for gamma rays, which uh, show you the big explosions of energy in the universe. So uh, there's lots of telescopes out there. We pretty much have a telescope for each kind of light in the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, the tension is to do one type of light, and that's because if you tried to build a telescope that looked at all the different kinds of light, it'd be absolutely gargant stuff. Now, we can fit in maybe one thing to do with stars as well. Who wants to see the aftermath of a supernova? Yeah, okay, let's get to this one here. If it's a really big star, it will explode in what's called a supernova. Uh, it leaves over remnants like this. This is the remnants of a supernova in the Cassiopeia uh, constellation. So it leaves all this 